An archaeologist took pictures of six bodies buried in 8,000-year-old graves in southern Portugal some 60 years ago. According to a recent investigation of these formerly unreleased pictures, the earliest human mummies are not from Egypt or even Chile, but rather from Europe. Welcome to the shocking discovery made by scientists in Portugal, southern Europe. During 1960s excavations in Portugal's southern Sado Valley, more than a dozen ancient bodies were discovered, and at least one of them had been mummified, probably to make it simpler to carry before burial, according to researchers who analyzed the photos and visited the burial places. There are also indications that other individuals buried at the site may have been mummified, implying that the practice was widespread in the area at the time. Mummification was practiced in ancient Egypt about 4,500 years ago, and evidence of mummification has been discovered in Europe dating back to around 1000 BC. However, the recently discovered mummy in Portugal is the oldest ever discovered, and it surpasses the previous record owners, mummies from Chile's Atacama Desert's coastal region, by roughly 1,000 years. Although mummification is relatively simple in dry environments such as the Atacama Desert, evidence for it is difficult to come by in Europe, where much wetter conditions mean mummified soft tissues rarely survive, according to Rita Peroteo Sterner, an archaeologist at Uppsala University in Sweden. It's quite difficult to make these observations, she added in the interview, but it's doable with combination methodologies and experimental effort. Peroteo Sterner is the lead author of a study published in the European Journal of Archaeology on the discovery. The 13 individuals described in the recently rediscovered images, 8 from ARA 1962 and 5 from PSB 1960, were subjected to archaeothanatological investigation. The goal of the study is to determine the impacts of natural decomposition processes on the deposit in order to reconstruct the effects of human activities. Archaeothanatology relies on extensive field measurements of the specific position, orientation, and dip of each bone in the field, all of which are documented in three-dimensional coordinates, but this was clearly not accessible here. Several rolls of photographic film discovered among the property of Manuel Farina dos Santos, a deceased Portuguese archaeologist who died in 2001, provide evidence of mummification. In the early 1960s, Farina dos Santos worked on human remains discovered in the Sado Valley. The scientists discovered black and white photographs of 13 burials from the Mesolithic or Middle Stone Age when they prepared the images for the new study. Although the National Museum of Archaeology in Lisbon had some documentation and hand-drawn maps of the site, these images were previously unknown and provided archaeologists with a rare opportunity to analyze the burials, according to Pedro Teo Sterner. The bones of one skeleton were hyperflexed, that is, the arms and legs had been moved beyond their natural limits, which indicated the body had been tied with now disintegrated bindings that were tightened after the individual's death, according to the scientists who used the photographs to recreate the burials at the two sites. They also noticed that the skeleton's bones remained articulated or joined and in place after burial particularly the very small bones of the feet, which normally fall apart completely when a person decomposes, she explained. There were also no indicators that the ancient grave's debris had shifted when the body's soft tissue decayed, a process that causes the body's volume to shrink, resulting in nearby sediments filling up the gaps left behind, implying that no such decomposition had occurred. These characteristics taken together suggested that the body had been mummified after death, the person was likely desiccated and then gradually shrunk by the tightening of the bindings, she added. The photos have their own restrictions. Part of this is due to the traditions of photographic documentation at the period, which often resulted in a small number of photographs being recorded. The lack of close-up views makes it difficult to identify diagnostic skeletal elements. While most photographs show a general view of one or several individuals, Providing important information about the relative position of the burials, close-up views make it difficult to identify diagnostic skeletal elements. The majority of the shots were taken at an oblique angle, causing distances in the images to be distorted and some skeletal elements to be partially obscured. Furthermore, they do not record the various stages of the excavation, which could be due to the fact that the images were primarily used to document scientific data at the time and rarely documented investigation methods. The photos are monochrome, with overexposure or high contrast levels occasionally resulting in dark areas in the images, 
making it difficult to differentiate the sediments and, in some cases, the position of the bones. To summarize, the photos do not always contain diagnostic characteristics that allow precise spatial relationships between individual bones and joints to be identified. The data from human decomposition studies conducted at Texas State University's Forensic Anthropology Research Facility, where one of the researchers had studied, were also used to examine the ancient burials, according to Pero Teosterna. Those experiments on recent corpses revealed which processes ancient inhabitants in the Sado Valley most likely took while mummifying the individual, she said. The researchers said in the report that it appeared the individual had been tangled up and placed on an elevated structure, such as a raised platform, to allow decomposition fluids to flow away from additional contact with the body. The researchers also discovered that the mummification process included the use of fire to dry out the corpse and that the body's bindings were gradually tightened over time, maintaining anatomical integrity but increasing limb flexibility. While evidence from other ancient skeletons from the same site indicates those bodies were treated similarly, Peiro Teosterna noted those specimens do not demonstrate the same mix of evidence. If some of the dead were carried to the Sado Valley sites to be buried from elsewhere, as the researchers speculate, mummification, which resulted in much smaller and lighter dead bodies, would have made them easier to carry. University College London archaeologist Michael Parker Pearson, who wasn't involved in the Sado Valley study, said his team developed these procedures to identify mummification in ancient skeletons nearly 20 years ago. It is quite thrilling to have the practice recognized elsewhere in Europe, he stated. While the mummified skeleton from the Sado Valley was much older, Parker Pearson's team discovered evidence of mummification in skeletons from an island in Scotland that were about 3,000 years old. And while the mummified skeleton from the Sado Valley was much older, he said in an online interview that it might not remain the oldest known for long. There were traces of mummifications 30,000 years ago at Kosteni in Belarus, and there were suggestions of 10,000-year-old mummifications at El Wad and Ain Malaha in Israel. The type of research done in this new study is exactly what these sites need, he said. Photographic and written documents from Arroco and Pocas de Espento have revealed evidence of mortuary practices that match what we already know about ancient burials in Portugal, with a slight difference in the position of the body between the two sites possibly reflecting local tradition. Most remarkably, our findings suggest that the bodies were processed in completely unknown ways prior to the burial. The flexion of the limbs is so strong in some cases that an additional supporting element, such as a wrapping, may have been required, which could explain how the corpses were placed in such confined spaces. The influx of sediments may have been stopped depending on the method of wrapping, complete wrapping or simply binding with ropes or bandages, allowing the bones to migrate into more hyperflex positions as the surrounding sediment applied pressure on the body. The uncommon pattern given by ARA 1962, Unknown 3, i.e., the combination of the body's position and the preservation of the labile articulations of the feet, suggests that this person was dehydrated through mummification before burial, in addition to being wrapped. It's unknown whether the wrapping would have been in place at the time or whether the body, which had been mummified by that point, would have been buried unwrapped. The analysis of newly rediscovered photographs of burials at Arapuco and Pocas de Aspento, informed by archaeothanatology and experimental partners, allows us to add information on a series of ancient burials in Portugal. These burials follow a pattern that is typical of these hunter-gatherer tribes' mortuary customs, yet parts of the body's care, such as its transformation and curation before burial, are novel. The proposed cases of mummification and subsequent interment of hyperflexed intact bodies, as well as new insights into the use of burial places, such as a very tight clustering of burials, highlight the importance of both the body and the burial place in the wider hunter-gatherer landscape of southwestern Portugal. Thank you for watching the video. Until the next one, stay safe.